Good day and welcome to DepEd TV, a venue where you can be in one place virtually, even from different locations in reality. This is Teacher Rev, your grade 11 math teacher, your guide to an exciting and amazing math venture. Decision making is an important skill that each individual should acquire. In making decision, we should look at all angles for us to make a sound and wise decision. In real life, we always encounter situations where we have to choose the best option to come up with the right decision. Thinking critically and logically will help us to decide on things wisely. Last week, we discussed about the expected value or the mean value of a discrete random variable x with a given formula. We also discuss the variance of a random variable which displays the variability or the dispersion of the random variables. It shows the distance of a random variable from its mean, which can be computed using the given formula. Lastly, we focus on the standard deviation of random variable x if it is the square of the variance as shown in the formula. Interpreting the mean and variance of probability distributions will give you an idea on how to weigh things for you to choose the right option. Today, be ready to explore beyond your usual borders as we apply our knowledge of mean and variance of probability distribution in real-life problems. Let's start by discussing two situations. Help me decide on what to do. First, I am curious about finding the average number of heads that would appear if I will toss two coins together. Which formula should I use? Since I want to look for the average number of heads, that means I need to find the expected value or mean of the distribution. So if your answer is A, then you're correct, because the given formula in A is the formula in finding the expected value or mean of the distribution. In the second situation, I went to the grocery store and noticed that there are five different kinds of brown sugar at different prices. And each brand has different probabilities that they will be sold. What formula should I use if I want to determine how the prices vary from the average price of the product that would be sold to the customers repeatedly? Since I want to look for the variation in prices from the average price of the product that would be sold to the customers repeatedly, I am actually looking for the standard deviation. Although, it also measures variability but the units of standard deviation match those of the prices of sugar since it is the square root of variance. So if your answer is C, then you're correct, because the given formula in C is the formula in finding the standard deviation of the distribution. Were you able to get the right decision on the two problems? That's all right if you didn't get both, as we are just having our warm-up. Have you heard of an unfair die? Yes, there is such a thing as an unfair die. This happens when one face of a die has a greater probability of occurring than another. So let's talk about an unfair die. Suppose an unfair die is rolled. We will let x be the random variable representing the number of dots that would appear with a probability distribution. Have you wondered what average number of dots would appear with the highest probability? So based on the distribution, the face of a die that is favored is the face having four dots because it has the highest probability. But let's focus on the computation. First, let us find the mean of the probability distribution using the formula. Let's gain the values in our calculator. 1 times 0 0.1 plus 2 times 0 0.1 plus 3 times 0 0.1 plus 4 times 0 0.5 plus 5 times 0 0.1 plus 6 times 0 0.1 and the result is 37 over 10 or 3.7 based on the computation 
the mean of the probability distribution 3.7. We can say that the average number of dots that would appear is a number near to 3 and 7 tenths, which is 4. If we will repeat the experiment over and over, there is a higher possibility that the 4 dots will appear since the average number of dots that would appear is 4. How does the assumed value of the outcome vary from the average number of dots that would appear? An alternative formula in finding the variance is shown. You may use this to determine the variability of the assumed values from the mean. Use the formula for finding the variance and standard deviation. You may also use the formula we used last meeting. For now, let us use the alternate formula, which is the one highlighted. First, Construct a table which will contain the elements you need to solve the variance and standard deviation. Now, to find the variance, let's construct this table. We need the square of x and the product of the square and the probability. Let's also include the product of each random variable with its observed probability. So, let's consider the given table. Please make sure you have a copy of the table on your paper. This time, let's fill the column with the label of x squared. Let's square each term. Please fill out this part of your table. Hope you're finished. Let's answer. So the square of 1 is 1, 2 is 4, 3 is 9, 4 is 16, 5 is 25, and 6 is 36. Did we get the same value? If yes, then we are doing well. Now we are on the last column with label of x squared times the probability. Let's get the product of each term. Please fill this out in your table. Are you finished? Let's look at the answers. So the product of 1 tenths and 1 is 1 tenths. Of 1 tenths and 4, it's 4 tenths. Of 1 tenths and 9, it's 9 tenths. Of 5 tenths and 16, it's 8. Of 1 tenths and 25, it's 2 and 5 tenths. And of 1 tenths and 36, it's 3 and 6 tenths. So, the summation of the product is 15 and 5 tenths. Now, to complete our solution, let us recall the formula. Let us substitute the values. We know that the summation of the product is 15.5 and the mean is 3.7. We have to square the mean, so we have 3.7 squared, which is equal to 13.69 and to get the variance we have to subtract it from 15.5 so we have 15.5 minus 13.69 and the result is 181 over 100 or 1 1.81 since this is a square unit we need to get the standard deviation which is acquired by solving for the square root of the variance let's use our calculator to get the standard deviation, let's key in the square root, followed by 1.81, and the answer is about 1.35. Therefore, the variance of the random variable x, the number of dots that appeared, is equal to 1 and 81 hundredths, while the standard deviation is equal to 1 and 35 hundredths. Remember, a smaller variance or standard deviation means that the assumed values or data points tend to be very close to the mean. While a higher variance or standard deviation means that the assumed values or data points are spread out from the mean. Specifically, the variance and standard deviation measures or describes how far a set of data is spread out. Since the value of the standard deviation is 1 and 35 hundredths, 
we can say that the assumed values of each outcome are somewhat close to the mean about 1 in 3,500 units from the mean. So, if this is the case, will you join in a game of chance using an unfair die? Knowing this information, your decision of joining or not joining a game using an unfair die depends on you. No right or wrong answer will be credited. But make sure you will think more critically and logically before you make a decision. Remember, being fair and just is a virtue. Bear in mind that the mean of a discrete random variable is just the average value of a random variable over repeated trials of experiment. So let's have another scenario. The number of cellular phones sold per day at the e-cell retail store with the corresponding probabilities is shown in the table. This time, let's compute for the mean, variance, and standard deviation and try to interpret the result. Are you ready? First, let us find the mean of the probability distribution. This time, let's use our calculator and solve for the products of the given value of x and its observed probability. So we have 15 times 0 0.3 is 9 over 2 or 4.5. 18 times 0 0.2 is 18 over 5 or 3.6. 19 times 0 0.2 is 19 over 5 or 3.8 20 times 0 0.15 is 3 and 22 times 0 0.15 is 33 over 10 or 3.3 .3. then we solve for the sum of the products let's note the formula as shown let's use our calculator that is 4.5 plus 3.6 plus 3.8 plus 3, plus 3.3, and the result is 91 over 5 or 18.2. Thus, the mean is 18.2. We can say that the average number of cellular phones sold per day at the e-cell retail store is 18 and 2 cents, which is about 18. If we will keep on recording the sales of eCell retail store, there is a higher possibility that 18 cellular phones will be sold per day since the average number of cellular phones sold per day is 18 and 2 tenths. Let's solve for the square of x first. Let's use the fill formula. Let's complete our table by squaring x, then getting the product of the squared value of x and its observed probability. Let's do it by row. Using our calculator, we start with 15 squared, which is 225, times the probability, which is 0 0.3. The answer is 135 over 2, or 67.5. Now for the second row. We have 18 squared, which is 324 times the probability of 0 0.2, the result is 324 over 5 or 64.8. Now for the third row, we have 19 squared, which is 361 times 0 0.2. The answer is 361 over 5 or 72.2 now for the fourth row we have 20 squared which is 400 times the probability which is 0 0.15 the answer is 60 and for the last row we have 22 squared is equal to 484 times the probability of 0 0.15 the answer is 363 over 5 or 72.6. We need the sum of the product, so we have to add all the items on the last column, starting with 67.5 plus 64.8 plus 72.2 plus 60 plus 72.6, and the answer is 337.1.
Now, to complete our solution, let us recall the formula. We have everything we need to be able to solve for the variance. Let us substitute the values. We know that the summation of the product is 337.1 and the mean is 18.2. We have to square the mean, so 18.2 squared is equal to 331.24. Then we have to subtract this from 337.1. So we have 337.1 minus 331.24 and the result is 5.86. So the variance is 5.86. Since this is a square unit, we need to get the standard deviation, which is acquired by solving the square root of the variance. Let's get the square root of 5.86. Let's key in the square root in our calculator, followed by 5.86. And the answer is about 2.42. So, the standard deviation is 2.42. Therefore, the variance of the random variable x is equal to 5.86, while the standard deviation is equal to 2.42. Since the value of the standard deviation is 2 and 42 hundredths, we can say that the assumed value of each outcome is somewhat close to the mean, or about 2 and 42 units from the mean. I hope it is now clear how we relate the concepts of mean, variance, and standard deviation to real-life scenario. Let's discuss one problem. Ray has a problem with his television set. It's no longer functioning. He needs to buy a new one, but he doesn't have enough money for it. His friend Jason has a solution to his problem. He is selling raffle tickets worth 100 each which will give Ray a chance to win a 32-inch LED television worth 15,000 pesos. But he only has 5 tickets left. Hearing the story, let's put your shoes in Ray's position. First question, if you are Ray, would you buy a raffle ticket? Why? If Ray decided to buy 5 tickets, what is the probability that he would win the prize if 1,000 tickets were sold? How about the question, if Ray wins the raffle, how much money will he gain? Or what if 1,000 tickets were purchased by different individuals? What is the expected value of buying one ticket? If your Jason, Ray's friend, will you sell him the ticket? Before we discuss each question, let us analyze the situation first. Let's look at this situation. If Ray will buy a ticket, he will have a chance to win the prize that is worth 15,000 pesos. If he is lucky enough, this will be a good thing for him. But on the other hand, if he is not lucky, then he will lose 500 pesos, which is the cost of buying the five tickets. Considering this amount, you are aware that you can buy more essential needs like food, school and medical supplies, and other miscellaneous needs rather than using it to buy tickets. However, if you allocated extra money for the other unexpected expenses, buying a ticket is not bad at all. The point of making the right decision is not difficult if you know how to consider what is more important. If you are Ray, you need to understand the given details of the situation for you to make the right decision. If you win the prize, your net gain is 15,000 pesos. Less 500, which is the amount you spent to buy the 5 tickets, and you end up with a winning of 14,500 pesos. So, the answer to the first question, if Ray wins the raffle, how much money will he gain? The answer would be 14,500 pesos if he bought the five tickets. Now let's find out the answer to another question. If Ray decided to buy five tickets, what is the probability that he would win the prize if 1,000 tickets were sold? 
the probability that Ray will win the prize is 5 out of 1,000 tickets or 5 over 1,000. But if you decide to buy one ticket only, then your net gain is 15,000 less 100, which is the amount spent for buying one ticket, which means a winning of 14,900 pesos. And the probability that you will win the prize is one out of a thousand tickets. Note that the more tickets you buy, the more chances you have of winning. However, your chance of losing is higher than your chance of winning because it is equal to one less than the probability of winning. If you buy five tickets, the probability that you will not win the prize is 995 out of a thousand or 995 thousandths. While if you buy one ticket only, the probability is 999 out of 1,000 or 999 thousandths. We were able to answer most of the questions in our analysis of the situation. This time, let's focus on the last question. What if 1,000 tickets were purchased by different individuals? What is the expected value of buying one ticket? In this case, we need to use the formula for the mean. Since the expected value is also defined as the average value of a random variable over numerous trials of an experiment. Let's organize our data into a table. Two situations may happen. We either win or lose. Since 1,000 tickets were purchased by different individuals, we have one person in possession of one ticket. This means that each individual may lose 100 pesos because it is the price of one ticket or may win 14,900 pesos since the amount of the TV is 15,000 pesos. Let us fill out our table with its values. Since 1,000 tickets were sold, then what is the chance that a person will win? If your answer is 1 out of 1,000, your answer is correct. So what is the chance that a person will lose? If your answer is 999 out of 1,000, your answer is correct. We have not yet answered what the expected value would be as we still need to solve the formula. But we have everything we need on the table. Since the expected value is the sum of the values of the random variable with its observed probabilities, then we can use this formula. The negative value means the one loses money on the average. In particular, someone who buys tickets loses 85 pesos per ticket purchase on the average, even though there is a chance that he could still win. This time, let's focus on the game of chance problem. We've been talking about chances since day one of our discussion. Now let's participate in one game of chance. Are you familiar with the relay wheel? I remember being able to participate in one during the fiesta celebration in our barangay. One of the games was a guessing game where one must guess the color that will come out when a person spin the wheel, in the hope that the odds will be in his favor. Some of these games have fair wheels, while some have unfair wheels. Now, let's look at the given problem. A relay wheel in a fiesta carnival has the numbers 1 through 30. If you bet 5 pesos, you will have a chance to win a prepaid load worth 100 pesos. Let X denote the net gain for a bet. Your task is first to complete the table. Then, find the expectation if you play a bet and interpret the result. Let's start with the table and understand the values in it. We know that we have to pay 5 pesos for one game, where we have a chance to win a load of 100 pesos. Since we need to spend 5 pesos for the payment, our total win will be 100 less 5, which is 95. This time, let's complete the table. Can you try filling the table first? 
We know that we have 30 choices, but the relay will land on only one item. So the probability that you will win is 1 out of 30. This means that the probability that you will lose is 29 out of 30. So, we have completed our table. Let's work on the expected value. We may have it on table or we can already place it in our formula. Prepare your calculator in this case. Let's find the product of the random variable x and its probability. Let's key in the values in our calculator. For the first row, the product of 95 and 1 over 30 is 19 over 6 or 3.17. For the second row, the product of negative 5 and 29 over 30 is negative 29 over 6 or negative 4.83. Now we have everything we need to be able to find the expected value of x. Let's focus on the last column. The expected value can be computed by getting the sum of the last column in the table so we can represent it this way. Let's substitute the values that we acquired. Let's use our calculator to compute. That is 3.17 plus negative 4.83 and the result is negative 83 over 50 or negative 1.66. So, the expected value is negative 1.66. This means that if you will repeatedly participate in this game, although you have a chance to win, you would lose 1 peso and 66 centavo on the average per game. Let me leave you with a problem to answer. Most people go for insurance for the purpose of security and investment at the same time. So the problem goes like this. A life insurance company will sell a 250,000 one-year term life insurance policy for members of armed forces of the Philippines for a premium of 500 pesos. Let X denote the net gain from the insurance company. Based on the collected data of the company, a member of the Armed Forces Police has a 99.96% chance of surviving within one year. Our assignment is to complete the given table and solve for the expected value. Post your answer in your social media accounts and use the hashtag MathVenture. We had a rich discussion on how we can apply mean and variance in different problems that we encounter in life. I hope you understand how important learning about mean, variance, and standard deviation can be in arriving at a well-thought-out decision in life. Today has been a great learning adventure. So, see you next week on another Math Venture with Teacher Reb. Remember, don't stop until you're proud. Learning math takes time. Bye!